Praise God. Well, what you, what you need right now is a new preacher. <laughs> uh, let me be honest with you. Uh, I'm not having a good day today. Amen. But, uh, but here we are, and I guess, in, the, in that is gain. Amen. So uh, I'm going to try to preach the word. And a uh, couple of things happened. Yesterday we went to Morency, like Pastor Pete says, and uh, and I didn't take my Bible over to over there because uh, there was no need for it. And last night when we came back from from Morency, we didn't go to to Bisbee to our house. We stayed here in Douglas in in our other house in here in Douglas. And uh, guess what? Uh, I didn't have no Bible. So this morning, uh, I needed another Bible to, to read to you. But uh, uh, the one that, that they provided, that Brother Felix provided for me, uh, the lettering was too small. <laughs> so what else could, could go wrong? And uh, I'm going to use my phone, okay? Because I, I want to read this version because it reflects what I'm about to speak this morning. Amen. Uh, would you please stand up with me in reverence to the Word of God and, and let's read on, on James, in the book of James, in chapter 4. I believe it's verse 7 and 8 that I, I want this morning. And uh, Bear with me, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. You guys have it? James, it must be in the, in the, sc in the screen right now for those who, who are not used to bring a Bible to church anymore. So it goes like this in the India. New Living Translation, this is the one that I, I like for this particular message that I'm about to preach this morning. So it, it goes like this, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. So humble yourself before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Amen. Uh, let's, let's go to our in prayer just for a couple of seconds. Father God, we, we love you this morning, God. We praise your name and uh, uh, we ask God that you that you bless us with your word, Lord God, that you speak to our hearts. Father, we need you this morning more than ever. We need your strength, we need your, your presence, God. We need your Holy Spirit. Touch every one of us, anoint us with your Holy Spirit and uh, help us not only be reverent to your word, God, but uh, uh, to apply it to our life, put it into practice. Your word says that uh, we must be not only hearers of the word, but uh, that we put it into practice as well. So help us with that this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, I'm not so good at it. In fact, I don't know nothing about this, about sign language. Maybe, oh, thank you, sister. Maybe you guys know. But I'm gonna, I learned something not long ago, and I wanna, I wanna do it with you. Put your hands like that. Put your hands like that. That means to submit. Submit yourself to God. Submit to God and resist. Go like this. That's fighting. You are resisting. Yes. Resist the devil. And the devil will flee from you. 
and then go like this draw close to God and God will draw close to you ain't that something beautiful when I learned when I learned this I said I need to teach this to, to the church because we need to submit we need to we need to resist the devil and we need to get close to God amen you might be seated praise God you see now you learn something new <laughs> Praise God. <coughs> uh, my question for you is this. What is evil? What is evil? Evil is one of those words very hard to, to explain. We have seen the effects of, the, of, of evil. We have seen it all over the world. Okay. I believe that uh, uh, the whole world is full of evil. And the reason is, I guess, because, because uh, uh, most of us we haven't been able to control it. On the opposite, evil most of the times takes over our homes, needless to say our nation, our country, our states and, and local government as well. So we see that uh, that uh, Everything and anything is impregnated with evil. And yet, even though we have seen the, uh, the effects of, the, of evil, we don't know how to define it. Defining it is very difficult. But, but let me tell you this. Back in the... Uh, Many centuries ago, when, uh, when the people wanted to learn something, to understand something, they look up to, to the heavens, to the heavens, trying to find God and, and draw from God the answer for whatever that, that it was needed back in those days. And uh, we used to get, or, or people back then used to get directions from God, from the almost, from the, from the most high, on how to live life, on how to behave, on how to, to relate to one another in our, not only uh, uh, with the world, but uh, with our families, with our wives, and with our, or with the husbands. It was a common thing just to draw wisdom from God, to understand God, to, to ask God, God, what is your will for this? What is your will for that? But uh, the centuries passed by, and pretty much around the, the 15 and 17 centuries, it was the time of the Renaissance. Renaissance. Europe, and not only Europe, America was revolutionized by, by the, the wisdom of those days. That time gave, gave us uh, good things like the, the reformers, like Martin Luther, like uh, Cal Calvin, uh, Savonarola, uh, and, and many others that uh, one time in the, in the, uh, they protested against the, uh, the establishment of the church back in the day. 
And they initiated what they called the reform. The reform, Martin Luther was, uh, was one of the main uh, persons of the reform. And thank God for that, it was a good thing because, because the Bible was not uh, uh, in prison anymore with the clergy. But anybody could have a Bible. Gutenberg started printing Bibles in the, uh, in the German languages and then in Spain uh, there was this guy Cipriano Valera, Casidoro de Reina. And they translated the, the Bible from, from the, uh, the Greek and Hebrew languages to the, uh, to the, to the Spanish language. And we Hispanics were able to, to read the Word of God. And not only, not only uh, Reina Valera, but uh, also Tyndale, uh, also uh, King James that uh, translated the, the Bible into the English language, into the German language, and all that. It was a beautiful thing. It was wonderful. The, the whole religious spectrum was revolutionized because of that. But also in those days uh, we asked with the uh, with the reformers and the, uh, the revival that all of this brought to the to the society back in the day uh, the enemy pop up also and, and many Philosophers or philosophers pop up in in Europe and uh, and many other parts of the of, of the world, and uh, there came Nietzsche. Nietzsche, uh, that to me was nothing good, but uh, yet their philosophies are being taught in the schools nowadays. Darwinism, the evolution of man, and all of that brought uh, uh, the people to understand that uh, there was not a creation, but there was an evolution. That uh, an amoeba came out of the out of the, the ocean, and uh, God knows what happened, and then uh, a living thing came out of it, and it was evolutionizing until, until the monkey came up, and, uh, and the, uh, then the gorilla, and, uh, and throughout the and centuries, um, some people say even thousands of years after that, uh, they came to be a man the way we are now. Well, it might sound true to you because we've been thought of all that in schools and we've been saying that uh, our ancestral relatives were the monkeys and the gorillas and all. Well, I have to agree, some people look like monkeys but that doesn't make them monkeys. <laughs> Praise God. And so uh, Darwinism came uh, came into in, 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 on scene, and uh, is uh, the, the the Darwinism has been proved wrong many times throughout the ages, many times, uh, because practically it is impossible for love for life to develop uh, itself just like that. It is impossible. There has to be something. There has to be uh, something or somebody not only that creates the, 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 the being but uh, that give them life. Because don't forget life is a gift from God. We all are breathing nowadays because God gave us the, uh, the gift Amen. to breathe. Yes. Don't forget that. Yes. When, the, 
when Daniel was in the in the in the court of, of uh, Belshazzar, the king of Babylon. When I discovered these words, I was fascinated. Daniel told Belshazzar, talking about God, he said, The God in whose hand your very breath is. Yes. Can you imagine that? You know what that means, brother? That means that, that if it's the will of God, that was the last time that you breathe. Ain't that something? Our life, our very breath, hallelujah, is in the hands of our living God. Amen. It's in the hands of Him. He is the one that gives us life. Yes. He gives life to whoever He wants. Yes, and let me tell you, even though we don't, we don't like this part, sometimes, even so, God kills Whoever he wants. Yeah. <laughs> I think I told you this one time, a long time ago. When I was in Bible school, we used to talk about things related to God and, and, and the attributes of God and the sovereignty of God and all the stuff. And, and many of my, of my fellow students uh, took the sovereignty of God uh, to an extreme, uh, a ridiculous stream that uh, uh, there was no logic explanation for that. And it caught my attention, caught my attention, and I said, I'm, I'm going to, to try to understand the sovereignty of God. And uh, yeah, the next, I don't know, one, two, three months, I can remember. I spent most of the night with, with a bunch of books on my, on, on my table because I didn't have no desk back then. In Bibles, in Spanish, in English, in Hebrew, in, in Greek, and starting trying to understand the sovereignty of God. And after some, some time of study, one night, I remember that. I was sitting on, on, on my chair with a table in front of me and I fell on my knees. Hallelujah. Yeah. I fell on my knees and I told God, God, from now on, I promise you, I'm not going to fight your sovereignty no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Instead of fighting it, I'm going to preach it. Yes. I'm going to defend it. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to proclaim it every time and every opportunity that you give me. Yes. This happened many years ago when I was in Bible school. And from now on, from, from that time on, I'm sorry. Every time that I have opportunity to stand behind the pulpit, I promise myself to preach about the sovereignty God. Hallelujah. The sovereign God, hallelujah, that don't make sense all the time. That many times is hard to understand. That most of the time we cannot explain Him. Hallelujah. But He has proven time after time throughout the ages. Yes. That he is always right. Yes. He is always right. Yes. So to those who think that uh, they can explain God and decipher God and understand the Bible completely from cover to cover, let me tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about because our God is not only awesome, it is impossible for us to understand Him because our thoughts are not His thoughts. We don't think the way God thinks. Hallelujah. He's more, far more intelligent than any human being. Even that the enemy 
Hallelujah. He's far beyond our comprehension. Yes. That is our God. Yes. Not, a, not a Mickey Mouse God that anybody can, can handle it. And, and, and no, it is impossible to do it. And that is the beauty of Him. Yes. That is the beauty. I've been studying the Bible for many years. Like I told you before, I, I read the Bible from cover to cover many times. And every time that I do it, I notice that we are only scratching the surface of the Bible. We haven't gotten deep enough because His mind is superior to us. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what, that's what, uh, not only us, that's what King Nebuchadnezzar needed to understand. That's what King Belshazzar needed to understand. That's why Daniel told him, the God in whose hands your very breath is. How can you understand that? You see, we think we are so sophisticated. Oh yes, we human invented the, the, the vehicle. We go to the moon back and forth every time we want. By the way, we haven't been able to go lately. <laughs> you notice that? The, the child is stuck in Florida for a few days because something went wrong with it. And we went to Mars. Hallelujah, we uncovered the mysteries of the deep you know, in the earth. But God is incomprehensible. Right, hallelujah. Yes, yes. I don't know how old are you, it's not my business. But you can spend the rest of your life studying God. Hallelujah. And would you, uh, at the end of your life, when you're in the presence of the Almighty, Hallelujah. you're going to come in front of Him and tell Him, God, I never was able to understand you. Yes. And yet, you were merciful and good to us all the time. You never left us. Hallelujah. You always taught us. Your ways, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, I'm giving you something to think about. For those of you that, that, that think that you are an overachiever, that you, that, you, that you learn and understand so much, let me, be, let me tell you, we're still ignorant when it comes to God. So the best that we can do Submit yourself to God. Don't try to understand them. Uh, accept them by faith. Submit. Hallelujah. Understand that you're not capable in, 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 your, in your attributes, in your mind, in your will. On everything that you are, you're not able to understand God. Submit. Yes. That is, that is something that would, especially you overachievers, especially you who, who, who had the opportunity to go, to go to college, to go to the universities. By the way, be careful with all that. Yes. I promote education all over. I thank God because God gave me the opportunity to spend several years of my life under the influence of godly men, godly men, educated godly men that taught me the, the love for the scriptures, hallelujah, that, that spoke to me about archaeology and theology and the Holy Spirit and God Almighty as a science. I thank God for that. But I understand that we are very limited in all that. Very limited. Yeah. But whatever God gives you, whatever understanding God gives you, take it. 
take it and, and with that understanding learn to love God with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength and understand that at the end of the day you are wrong and he is always right yeah. you know what it takes humility to do that because most of the time we want to be God we want to learn, we want to, to, to be greater than God. And it is not possible. That's why James tells these people here, submit yourself. Resist. Resist the enemy. Yeah. Learn to resist the devil. Yeah. Those natural tendencies that you have. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 let me get practical here, okay? Those natural tendencies that you have to gossip, to say things that are not true, to lie, to take things that don't belong to you, resist them. Resist them. God will supply, the Bible says, all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can spend the rest of your life, hallelujah, receiving and using the blessings of God. And they never run out. They never run out. Resist the enemy. Resist the temptation of, of behaving bad in your life. Of being mean with your wife or with your husband. Resist the temptation of, of just being proud, hallelujah. Thinking that you, are, that you are the best person that God created. Hallelujah. In the universe. And that everything is under your feet. Let me tell you, it is not like that. Uh, like I told you, I've been dealing with, with ministers for several years of my life. And I notice this. Every time that I meet a, 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 a very knowledgeable person, a very wise person, in the Word of God, a minister, uh, uh, some years ago, I... I, I I spent some, a few months in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. And I had the opportunity to go for a few, for a few Sundays to, uh, to Brands, what was the name? Frisco. In Frisco, Texas, but the name of the church was uh, Stonebriar, Stonebriar Church. And one of my, my, my mentors was a pastor, Shaq Swindoll. You guys know who Shaq Swindoll is? Man, the greatest teacher of the Bible here in, in the United States. And I went, he came to me and shook my hand. Such a humble person, sister. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can talk to him. Uh, hallelujah. And he was humble. Oh, your name is Sir Nestor. Nestor, welcome to our shoes and this and that. And, and we do this. And, uh, we're so glad that you... Man, I felt so important. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> in other times, uh, I used to go, when I live in Phoenix, I used to go to the school of pastors. An activity that the brother Toby Barnett had in Phoenix. Great man of God too. Great man of God. And I was coming into the shoes and he was standing right there by the door. And he came to me and shook my hand to it and greeted me and, and asked me for my name. Uh, I say, this man, hallelujah, I've grown admiring him admiring them yeah. you know and they were so humble so meek they talked to you like a, if they would have known you for years and for years. you know why 
Because that is the presence of God in, in, in people. The knowledge of God does not puff us up, doesn't make us feel like, like we are the greatest. He makes us humble. That's why the Bible says, submit to God. Submit to God. Hallelujah. And put aside your pride. Put aside whatever you may have. Hallelujah. Everything that you own, put it aside and just be naked before God. To God, hallelujah. Uh, I told him many times, God, please, please, make me like you are. Let me learn from this, from these guys that uh, are ministers. So, uh, touch, teach me to be humble like that. Hallelujah. Teach me to, to understand your words. Hallelujah. Not be puffed up. Help me submit myself to you. And that's what we all need. Because especially when we are young, we have the tendency to believe that uh, the whole world is under us. That we, there's nobody more handsome than we. Oh, we are it. The two or three girls around the corner, they're crazy about me. Huh? I'm li li like they say in Spanish, I'm the last Coca-Cola in the desert. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not, hallelujah. Many years ago, there was a movie called Sherry's of Fire. You might have seen, seen it, I don't know. What is the story about about this this Christian young man that was was in the seminar and he was preparing himself to be to see a, to be a missionary somewhere in Africa I believe or something like that I can't even remember and, and, and in his prayer he was he told God one more time he was a very handsome guy tall very athletic and he was telling God God, I'm building my body up. I'm building my mind up. I'm exercising to be strong. Because all this strength that you've given me, I want to use it for your honor and glory in a mission field. Ain't that something? Oh man, we got an, an, an athletic body. Oh no, uh, I want to use it to impress the girls. I want to walk in front of the, of the girls and, you know, so they can see my body. No, it's not like that. God has given you that ability. Submit to God. Submit to God. Resist the enemy. Draw close to God. If the Bible says, draw close to God, get closer to God, it's because we have the ability to do it. Yes. We have the ability, to, don't forget, God is never going to ask you for something that you cannot do. So he tells you, come to be closer. It's because we got the ability we got the power. We got everything that we need to get close to God. And then the Bible says that He will draw closer to you too. Brothers and sisters, I don't need to tell you this, but you must know it by now. All we need is God. Your character, your personality must be controlled by the living God. It's a different point of view. It's not like the world says that you read that you're the, the most important. No, no, no. It's not like that. You will understand that you do not come from the monkey. Judge that you are not here by accident. I was thinking the other day, no wonder the, 
uh, our young people are behaving like animals lately. Why not? For years and years they've been telling them that they, that they come from an animal. That they're not like, a, they're no better than, than, than a wolf, than a lion, and, and all that stuff. No. Something beautiful comes into the person when you tell them, Hallelujah. God created you like that. God made you. Hallelujah. You're not here by accident. You're not here just, just only by the will of a man and a, and a woman. No, God put you right here. What? God made you like that. Start saying that to your children. Start saying that to, to your boys and girls. I wish the school would do that too. And believe me, I really believe that the whole society would change. Why? Because God is our maker. You understand? But we need to submit to God. James said, the reason that I'm telling you this is because your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And let's face it, many of us Christians are like that. Our loyalty, loyalty is divided. Yes, we love God. We love God. But we don't show that love to God because of the attraction of the world. Let me tell you something. There's not many youngsters today in church. But it is not normal for girls to have sex with their boyfriends if they're not married. You understand that? Oh, Pastor Barajas, that's old fashioned. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, it's not normal for you to, to speak those ugly words, hallelujah, that you learn on the, on the street. It is not normal. Restrain yourself. Submit to God. You got problems with your, with your language. Take your thong to God. And tell God, God, control my thong. Control the places that I, that, I have, that I have a tendency to go. Control me, God. Submit yourself. And the Bible says, resist the enemy. And we need to resist them because not on our own strength. Let me tell you. If you try to resist the devil on your own, he's going to eat you for breakfast. Oh yeah. Don't you ever think that he will have mercy on you. No. He will kill you. He will eat you right away. Don't forget the Bible says that the enemy came to steal, to destroy. And that's what he's doing nowadays. He's still destroying the minds of our young people. He's still destroying, hallelujah, uh, families. He's still destroying, hallelujah, human beings. And let me tell you, you Christian people, you guys got a big target on your back. And the enemy is aiming the arrows at that target. You are the target. The enemy wants to destroy you. And if you are careless, he will do it. That's why it's so important. When we submit to God, when we resist the devil, then the Bible says that, that uh, God will draw closer to us. And that's fellowship. You will have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. And your entire life will be transformed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that is my message. I guess I preach short this time. Comparing to other times. 
Because that is the message. Draw closer to God. Stop praying Christianity. Hallelujah. Stop going out of the church on Sunday morning and out there business as usual. Resist the temptation. Resist the enemy. Have some Christian character on you. Hallelujah. And God will come and walk with you. And, and, and just like, uh, like it happened to, to uh, uh, Enoch. Enoch says the Bible, he walked with God for 365 years. And I can imagine that one time he told his wife. The wife told him, where are you going Enoch? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go and walk with God for a few minutes. And he came out of the house and started walking with God, talking with God. About current events, you know, about the NFL that just started and all the stuff, you know, and baseball and who hit the latest home run. Because God loves baseball, don't forget. <laughs> and all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, Enoch was walking on the air. And the Bible said that God took him. Hallelujah. Yes. Why? Because he spent his life in continual communion with him. And that's what God wants of you. He wants to take you. I'm going to prepare a home for you. Because what I am, I want you to be also. Amen. Amen. Step up with me. I finish my sermon. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father God, we love you, Jesus. We love you. I know that many times we don't reach the stature, God, that you want us to. I know that sometimes we don't reflect the glory of God the way you want us to, God. But this morning, Lord Jesus, I don't know where my brothers and sisters stand when they hear me say it of these words, God, but I pray that you bless them. I pray that these words, God, come into their minds and their hearts. And transform them, God, transform them. I pray that you change our ways, that you change our behavior. I pray, God, that the holiness of God may come to our life, God, uh, for the rest of our walk in this world. Please, take my brothers and sisters. Take them in your hands, Lord God. Bless them. Bless them. And I'm not talking about material blessings. I'm talking about to be blessed with your presence, with your guidance. With the strength, God, to resist the enemy. With the willing, Lord Jesus, to submit themselves to you. And that you Make us more and more ready to leave this world anytime, God, when you come up in the clouds of heaven. We praise you, we thank you. Bless my brothers and sisters. My God is still in control, and still he reigns on his throne. Though mountains may tremble and sea billows roll, I'll sing it.